A trailer just dropped on November 1st for The Book of Boba Fett, a new Disney Plus series set to be released December 29th. The story picks up sometime after the death of crime lord Jabba the Hutt. While some had thought it was The Mandalorian Season 3, it's a standalone show starring Tamuera Morrison as the titular character Boba Fett and Ming-Na Wen as the mercenary and assassin Fennec Shand. The costumes are designed by Shauna Terpsik, who was also the Mandalorian Season 2 costume designer, having taken over from Joseph Porro in Season 1. The Book of Boba Fett is essentially Seasons 2.5, meant to be sandwiched in between Seasons 2 and 3 of The Mandalorian, which, according to showrunner Jon Favreau, goes into production right after. The trailer looks amazing with the visuals and the tone of the show, with grittier and darker themes more in keeping with The Empire Strikes Back than Return of the Jedi. Like I've said in previous videos, the costumes in Disney Plus shows like Loki, WandaVision, and now The Mandalorian could rival any big screen feature film. The superhero and sci-fi genre are finally getting recognition, with The Mandalorian and WandaVision both being nominated in 2021 for Emmys in Outstanding Fantasy Sci-Fi Costumes. Going back to its roots, the inspiration behind The Mandalorian and now The Book of Boba Fett is taken from the spaghetti westerns of the 1960s by Sergio Leone and samurai drama films by Kurosawa. Because both Boba Fett and Fennec Shand were introduced in The Mandalorian, I'm at a bit of an advantage here because the costumes have already been discussed after the release of The Mandalorian Season 2. Shauna Terpsik is herself a huge Star Wars fan. She said in an interview with Designing Hollywood Podcast that she took inspiration from Karasawa's Seven Samurai when creating the costumes for The Mandalorian. Terpsik said that it's indicative of Star Wars that the characters essentially wear one costume throughout the history of their lives. Like the characters depicted in Seven Samurai and Sergio Leone's The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, she said that it's really important to create an iconic character. The costumes in these classic films are aged to perfection, are soft and worn and lived in. When Terpsik was interviewed for the job by Jean Favreau and director David Filani, the room was filled with designs by Doug Chang. Production designer for the Star Wars live-action series The Mandalorian, the Book of Boba Fett, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, Chang's visuals are most likely inspired by the late great Ralph McQuarrie, who was the conceptual designer and illustrator on the original Star Wars series. As a fan and someone who has attended Comic-Con for 10 straight years, Terpsik wanted to honor the fandom by studying not only the costumes from the original Star Wars series, but also the animated series, bringing the characters' costumes to life. She said that this is very challenging for the design team because the costumes are on real bodies and the fabric hangs in a certain way. The most important character featured in the trailer is Boba Fett wearing his iconic armor. His costume is Star Wars canon. For The Empire Strikes Back, the prototype costume designed by both Ralph McQuarrie and visual effects art director Joe Johnson was intended to be a super trooper, but the idea was axed due to cost. Originally for Empire Strikes Back, Lucas wanted the armor to look like it had been in many battles, repaired and repainted. He said it should appear dented and scratched up, somewhat hodgepodge, as if Fett had acquired pieces from different places and put it together himself. Juxtaposing Darth Vader's samurai-style helmet, Boba's helm is purely medieval, based on the barbet, a visorless war helmet of 15th century Italian design, often with the distinctive T-shape opening for the eyes and mouth. Chang flew the costume designer out to Skywalker Ranch to visit the warehouse that houses many of the original costumes, including Boba Fett. Terpsik was able to see, touch, measure, and take pictures with color cards, many of the original trilogy's iconic costumes, including the Stormtroopers, Jawas, and Tusken Raiders. She said, We measured the dent in the helmet and also work with legacy effects on this particular costume to build it. For me, and you know, it's doing the math, it's getting it right. Boba Fett's armor isn't nostalgia for nostalgia's sake, 
or just a cheap connection to the past. At a time when nostalgia seems to be used to pluck the heartstrings of people invested in the story, Boba's armor is representative, not just of the past, but it also dictates the present and the future. It embodies his flaws, warts and all. In the book of Boba Fett, Boba refurbished his armor, but kept dents like the one in his helmet as a reminder to himself, much like how we keep the lessons learned from prior mistakes. It motivates and affects Boba's decisions going into the future. Meanwhile, the jumpsuit under Boba's Empire Strikes Back costume is light gray, as I mentioned before it was originally white because it was meant to be a super trooper. Doug Chang's artwork also depicted Boba in the classic sort of light bluish gray jumpsuit. Terpsic, meanwhile, had something different in mind, but when she suggested that Boba might wear black in the series, Dave Filani said that it couldn't be because the black goes to Darth Vader. Now, as it would happen, when she was working with costume illustrator Michael Awandi, she failed to give him the note about the black and he just drew it the way she had envisioned it. So when she presented it to showrunner John Favreau, David Filani, and Doug Chang, they loved it. Terpsic said, I love the idea of the skirt, and because a lot of samurai always have the sort of fighting skirt, and the idea of him coming through the desert, and these royal robes, and I wanted to integrate him in black. The acid burns on his armor from the sarlacc, and the underfabrics, all made from silk, were aged and worn to show Boba's journey. In the trailer, we get a good shot of Boba and Fennec's costumes as they are walking into town. As the costume designer has stated, their costumes command respect. Meanwhile, Fennec Shan's costume and hair design were inspired by the Fennec Fox, a small, crepuscular, and adorable fox native to the Sahara Desert, the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt, and the Arava and Negev Deserts in Israel. The Season 1 Mandalorian costume designer, Joseph Paro, incorporated orange accents into Fennec's black costume, and when recommended, the character's hair include braids inspired by the Fennec fox. Wen said, When I went into the costume fitting, orange was the primary color, and I don't know if the costume department was thinking along the same line as I was, or if it was just intuitive, but that's the color of the fox. There is a bit of that orange in it, so I went a step further. The character's intricate braids are another nod to the animal. Wen said, she's an assassin. She's wearing a helmet, we thought. Let's maybe do something really fun with the hairdo. Create sort of a, like a tail for her with this long braid. Hairstylist Maria Sardavel came up with this beautiful, amazing braid, and we incorporated a little bit of the ears, like fox ears, into the top part of the braiding. There are a lot of creatures featured in the trailer. For instance, Boba has a meeting with a wealthy and well-dressed Athorian, being served by what I assume is a Twi'lek slave. While the Athorian are typically peaceful, there are a few well-known Athorian bounty hunters. And then we have two Gamorians who are standing behind Boba as he sits on Jabba's throne. The boar-like creatures are Jabba the Hutt's former security. Jabba's former captains and all-round bad guys, the Trandoshans and the Aqualish, are in this major scene when meeting with Boba and Fennec to discuss the change of regime. Dressed finely, their costumes show that they amassed wealth during Jabba's crime syndicate. Now, seeing that they're on Tatooine, it wouldn't be complete without a shot of Tusken Raiders. And we also see two female Twi'leks, one portrayed by Jennifer Beals, perhaps dancers, Based upon Beale's costume and jewelry, however, she appears to be someone with some wealth and power, so it'll be interesting to learn more about her character. And then finally, there is a major battle with a group of assassins dressed like ninjas holding force field shields. I'm very excited to learn more about the characters when the show is released in December, and we can get more into the themes and symbolism in future videos. I'll have more Book of Boba Fett content coming your way. In the meantime, if you're a Star Wars fan, check out my interview with Oscar-winning set decorator and production designer Roger Christian, the man who created the lightsaber. Thank you for spending time with me. I'll see you in the next video.